A warm welcome to all of you. Thank you so much for joining us uh, today. And uh, you know, uh, automation is something that, that is taking over the world. A lot of processes getting, a lot of things getting automated. People are worried that uh, many of the jobs will soon uh, disappear because of automation. Uh, but uh, you know, we we want to understand that you know what is next for automation. So the first question that comes to me is why uh, is Digital business automation is so important, and how does it work? Uh, so, uh, Mr. Jugaiman, if you could please uh, take this question up. Okay, I think um, uh, I'll toss this question to Mr. Mohammed Ali Shalan. If you could uh, talk to about us about why digital business automation is so important and how does it work. Uh, yes, yes. Actually, yes, digital business automation is very important. And um, the reason it's very important, this actually started since a long time when we start to automate some uh, dirty jobs or dull jobs that's, or dangerous tasks that have been done. So that was one thing that we need to automate somehow and to prevent the human intervention in this. Uh, later on, actually, as we technology is advancing day by day, actually, now a lot of things are coming to uh, kind of automation. For example, when we in a real estate industry, as where I'm working, we are using drones, for example, today uh, to kind of have a kind of photography, surveillance, uh, calculation of uh, the waste and calculation of a lot of things. And when we are making master development or something like this, in, in, infrastructure, in, infrastructure inspection. So we are using uh, this automation for this kind of work that can usually it was either dangerous or it's taking a lot of resources. Uh, and today it, is, it can be done uh, very easily using automation. And the best thing now today, what's going on with automation actually, for example, also we have uh, documentation and we can use uh, RBA to, um, to have some processes that's automated uh, on top of these. Uh, moreover, actually we are now engaging what's called IA, it's uh, the intelligent automation. Intelligent automation that we are combining uh, artificial intelligence with the RBA and sometimes with other uh, technologies like data analytics. Uh, in this, actually, we can detect certain situations and perform actions automatically rather than we have uh, plan everything from uh, zero from scratch. Then, okay, we can have some, we can take some room or consider, keep some room actually for the AI, the artificial yeah. intelligence uh, to take decisions. And this is actually is becoming a very fast uh, norm that we are seeing in a lot of activities and it's there everywhere. One of the things that's, you know, when I'm, you know, while we are uh, talking about smart cities, for example, or planning smart districts, because this is the trend here in Saudi Arabia as well in uh, different countries, while we are Thinking about it, for example, we are talking about the autonomous vehicles where you can have a kind of efficient use of transportation infrastructure and then can uh, have AI and RBA to decide in certain issues related to parking, related to utilization of best routes. So it's a lot of activities is done uh, in combination between artificial intelligence as well as the RBA. And what we are calling now is the intelligent automation that's coming and that is becoming the trend. So this is really very important and it's affecting everything in our lives. Uh, maybe I spoke about smart cities, but it's really affecting everything uh, in our lives. So this is my perspective about the intelligent automation. That's what I mm -hmm. called it like this. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Salan, uh, for giving us examples of how uh, you're using intelligent RT in the real estate uh, uh, sector um, in Saudi Arabia. Uh, uh, Mr. Patakarji, you know, RPA, was usually associated with was doing menial repetitive tasks. So people are freed. The human resource is freed from doing this. This can be done by a computer and the human beings do the all important work of taking decisions. Now we have intelligent RPA where you have artificial intelligence doing even more work. So is the decision making also off our hands? Okay, that's a very smart question. So I'll try to answer it in the best possible way. And I will say how healthcare comes in. See, in healthcare, it is a unique combination of digitization, automation, but human experience, whatever said and done, takes a complete lead away. So I will give you an example, right starting. I will go through a patient journey for you because all of us at one point of time, I think my industry is an industry where nobody wants to ever come. Nobody wants to come to a hospital except expecting mothers. So let's look at where automation starts. 
we built a nice state of the art call center we automated it ivr but you know what we found patient wanted to speak to a live agent because when i have an emergency i want to speak to somebody who can resolve my issue so we said okay a real essence of a good call center is pick up the call dial the medicaid number a live agent picks up second we said okay i walk inside my hospital i book an appointment now when i'm booking an appointment see when we cater to a healthcare crowd we have to look at various generations there are few people who are extremely comfortable thereby they go into the web they go into my portal they book an appointment it has to be readily easily available with a click of a button few people are extremely comfortable doing it in the mobile app few people still want to come to a hospital say this doctor is available tell me who is the best of the doctor who can resolve my issues and i will go to the doctor because we cater to an age group from right from the birth till 65 75 85 and believe me the requirements are very very different so we have to keep our platforms open in every way so that patients have complete healthcare has to be made accessible to everybody now once he comes inside now let's look at clinical protocols clinical protocols automation really helps in a very very big way earlier a doctor used to waste his time write everything in a in a manual sheet now those processes have become automated what has happened it has helped me to reduce the wait time of the patient to see a doctor so i am not getting into the detail because otherwise i'll take the entire time but you know i think healthcare is a lovely combination of automation digitization artificial intelligence but covering and encompassing everything is a lovely element of human experience because you can't take that away you can have the most automated spreadsheet but when you go to meet a doctor you judge the doctor by the way you are treated as a person not by the way you are treated for your disease he could be the best doctor but if he is rude he is nasty to you is the next time you want anything else yeah, i don't want to see this doctor so you know it's 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 a lovely combination and you have to live with this combination and one more yes. thing that i have found typically in this industry some of your very high potential doctors few things they don't want to automate like to answer what you're talking of the decision making mm. they said maybe 21 cases this type of symptoms i will treat this way but a robot will not decide i will take a call because every human being every human dna is different so decision making still remains with the high end consultant automation will provide him choices 1 2 3 4 5 it's like a food menu that you go in a tala bath or you go in a zomato but at the end of the day it's going to be the human being who says i want to do this so i hope i've answered okay. you now. okay so uh, you know at one point of time it seems that no matter how much work the computers will do uh, there are some places where the human will have last word uh, we have uh, mr uh, yasser al uh, zukaiman also with us uh, 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 thanks for joining us. We've heard uh, Mr. Salan talk about the use of uh, automation in real estate industry. We've heard uh, Koshi talk about uh, automation in healthcare. Uh, could you tell us uh, what is the role uh, of automation uh, in your business and how important it is for digital transformation? Uh, thank you, thank you, Kers, for hosting us and. Uh... hopefully we can provide uh, substantial value for the audiences here uh i would like first to uh, let's and my, my, the the strategy or methodology that i am adopting here first since i came from business back, background uh from engineering and uh, this uh, engineering uh, would give us uh, visibility how to interact and inter- integrate with different processes within the organization that's why my first my first uh, goal uh, going uh, with uh, to any industry for any industry specific we study carefully their business and then uh, study their business processes this business process reengineering is the key foundation to integrate and to uh, redesign the whole process in order to have to meet the main objective of business transformation sometimes we are shifting from the main objective of the business transformation the main business transformation is to 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 add more visibility 
more clarity, more security, more control within, within the organization. And this is where uh, business process engineering would give would, would, provide us, would provide us. If you go to that level, maximizing the business process integration, maximizing the le le level of business process engineering, going to the lowest transactional level, and usually we recommend to most of the uh, customers going to activity-based costing or at least unit product costing. Once this, is, this has been set it up, we put a methodology and also strategy how to make this change, helping the organization with the change management, because this is a huge impact. It will impact all the organization, not only the back office, it will impact the main industry specific, which is, let's assume in the, in the health industry, it will impact the patient, the doctors. And then from that, this relationship, saving, the, let's say, or treating the patient and the doctor responsibility is to treat that patient. Whatever business process, this is what we are doing is to redesign it. Once this is, has been set up, uh, this is, this is the foundation for the business. We look into the technology. We select technology. We try to capitalize on it. We try to get the maximum out of it in the shortest time. And, and by this, we did many success story that we reached to this level. Maximum within one year, one year and a half, you would reach to this transparency, activity-based costing, and also the whole transformation will be done in the most, let's say, controllable risk mitigation way. And, uh, and from that, this, is the, the, this would be the, 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 the foundation for the, what's called now, or what most of the organization are looking for, for the uh, robotic, for the AI, for the machine learning, all these things you would have now level of integration and interfaces between the back, the, the business solution and the technology in the in the OT side. Okay, so uh, you know there are a lot of efficiencies, greater transparency uh, that comes through with digital transformation. Uh, Mr. Shalan, could you give us an example of how uh, intelligent uh, RTA? enhances your uh, your business give us some examples does it uh, you know help you cut costs does it help you reduce lag time does it help you plan better could you give us some examples yes yeah. okay let, let me discuss uh, this for me <laughs> yes Mr. Sure, Shalant, please go okay. ahead okay uh, so actually let me discuss two things actually one thing is related to the ocr technology Usually, you know that uh, real estate industry is a heavy use, use. We have a heavy usage of paperwork, and uh, we have a lot of maps, a lot of things. Uh, typically, OCR have been used in uh, real estate since long time. But today, actually, as we are going into uh, the RBA as well in, as intelligent RBA, especially, we have a lot of good things that uh, today we can have a kind of reduce the time that we are using into uh, prepare our documentation. And also we can search for certain keywords in our documentation so that we can um, have indexing for it. We can have better utilization for it. Uh, now we can have a bit of a, a bit setup actually of all our documents. And you see here in Saudi Arabia, for example, the government have initiated a program that you can uh, even transfer a land and the ownership of the land, which is called Sukuk, from one to another, just uh, in a mobile app or something like this, because they have digitized every uh, SAC or every deed that is used for uh, land uh, ownership. So all these issues actually have um, and they help people in the organizations and the companies and everywhere. They try to to be to start automation actually. And this OCR tools that we are using today is really accelerating a lot of activities within the organization, and it helps us to uh, to to have uh, right decisions because we have a lot of information, better information. It's speedy decisions because today uh, we can have a, like very good automation that will give us uh, a lot of keywords, a lot of indicators at certain time, at the, you know, really good time. 
And with AI, actually, while we are using certain kind of documentation, what we are having today is that we can rely on this information to take some decisions. And even it can be validated by the people, but yani, at least the AI infrastructure itself will give a lot of decisions. One decision that's very important yani, when we're talking about um, uh, real estate, for example, is the decision in when to buy, when to sell uh, land. And this is actually very crucial when we are talking about, for us as a master developer, we are talking about millions of square meters, then a big land meaning that it will affect your cash flow uh, when you purchase such kind of lands. So it is very important today that you have a lot of information to connect and to uh, make the decision. Usually, companies have uh, higher experts who are uh, market experts. They analyze the market situation. They understand the news. They understand from the front people and say so that they can take the, real, the right decision. But today, what's happening actually is that because even the government itself is going a kind of open information, and we have a lot of open data initiatives that by the government here and there and everywhere and in Saudi Arabia as well. So you have a lot of information, wealth information that you need to dig into and to find that will help you into making your decision. Similarly, what we find available on the internet, on the social media or something like this. So all this kind of data is being analyzed and in a kind of uh, triggering certain decisions for us. Uh, this is actually also is making a kind of uh, an opportunity for people, uh, for uh, the young people actually, because rather than hiring experts or something like this, today you can find these tools and you can make smart decisions. Uh, you can be your expert utilizing these tools, which is becoming more and more uh, available. Uh, it's trained by different companies, so it's today is available, really available. And as well, it will enhance the operation at the same time actually it is sometimes we're preventing managerial errors because sometimes when you rely on an expert, a human expert, and he lacks certain kind of uh, knowledge or expertise in certain area, then his decision will not be accurate. What is happening now with AI is that in case the expert is trying to make a, a, the wrong decision, the AI tools at least will, uh, will notify, okay, there might be a risk in here or there based on the uh, knowledge or based on the information that is searched on the everywhere on the internet or open data or something like this. So in here I see like how we are correcting even the decisions of the experts and how we the, the ownership of the company can now flag certain points that was not able to be flagged before. Uh, okay. And of course, this in our is discussing a lot of a huge impact in the company because it's mm -hmm. decided, sometimes it is uh, defining the fate of the organization. We are taking a wrong decision in a wrong way. So this is really okay. two so, use so cases. So you're saying is because of um, smart automation, uh, that the chances of errors have mm -hmm. due. Yes, uh, exactly. Okay, uh, Mr. Jukaiman, uh, could you tell us what are the benefits of artificial in, uh, intelligence? And uh, you know, some examples on what used to happen earlier and how is it now because we have artificial intelligence. Because uh, you know, in India they say. Uh, BPO jobs have become redundant because, you know, an algo will do it. You will have robots who will talk and customer service will get, uh, you know, replaced. Some people say, we don't need clerks anymore because clerical work can be automated. Soon, even charter accountants will not be needed because a lot of that work can also be automated. So, uh, could you tell us what are the benefits of AI? Could you give us some examples of what used to happen? And because of AI, how it has changed now? Yes, uh, as I uh, explained previously, uh, the AI for me would be a tool. And uh, to use this tool effectively here, uh, without, I'm seeing it without the full mapping of the industry solution that the company is working in. For example, if it is in real estate, you have to map in your business solution, that means in the business processes in your industry solution, either in the shared services or the industry specific. In the health, similarly. I can give you an example on the manufacturing, which is the, the latest one we help a company to achieve its transformation here. Because of the full business process engineering that uh, that uh, that wa was 
a brief process for the AI, the, the manufacturing process is very complicated from, uh, from the selection of the raw material and then using it in all the processes of the routing and semi-finished production until the finished production, until it is received and used by the customer with all respect of or aspects of the quality services, all these kind of things. This kind of traceability usually in the manufacturing industry is not available. And unless you do this kind of business process re-engineering to reach to activity-based costing, and this is where the mapping with the AI, this, taking this example just alone, helping that, that customer to trace all his uh, quality production along with all the semi-finished production, along with all the waste, all the recycled material. Now it can be used like a gold company. Usually these kind of processes with uh, heavy industry uh, um, manufacturing, they consider it waste. And mm. it is considered by, to, part of the financial statement. It's a waste. For medium size and large size company, I don't have to tell you this kind of waste you are talking about hundreds of millions of dollars. Right? That's why I'm saying that the next phase now, those companies, if they will not go and do some sort of business process engineering, those companies who are going to invest in optimizing this waste, which is hundreds of millions, and using the technology and linking it to the AI or machine learning or the old SCADA side so that the optimization and the right decision on the right time will be made. I think those companies in the, uh, in the near future, not long future also, will be uh, really retracted to, to lower and those companies who are going to optimize and take them every single molecule, every single uh, product visibility, right. they will have the better uh, net to profit or, uh, or operational excellence. Okay, so you're saying, uh, giving the example of a manufacturing company that uh, their processes become more streamlined, uh, they are able to connect with their suppliers better, and uh, you know, even uh, inventories and all those uh, issues can be addressed better with some automation and some analytics. Uh, Mr. Bhat uh, Bhattacharya, I wanted to understand from you, you, you gave us the example of the customer uh, who's using a hospital and how he benefits from, uh, you know, intelligent RT if the hospital has it. What can you as a hospital uh, to, you know, have uh, uh, AI, RT together I mean, uh, what do you get? The customer is happy. You get more, you know, there's only as many customers that you can handle. There are only as many surgeries you can do. So how does it benefit you? So Anisha, I will try to uh, answer it in two phases. Number one, I will first try to answer in a phase of one latest innovation that we have done with regards to uh, nursing. And the second thing that I will try to address, it's a, it's a high-end technology which is known as predictive health analysis. So I will not go into the details of it because of certain issues, but I'll try to explain as much as I can, as I'm allowed to do. See, one of the huge challenges, I think all of us will agree that any patient who gets admitted in the hospital has, whenever I press a nursing call bell, I never have a nurse. Nurse never is there. And this is one of the most irritating experience for any patient because the moment you want you press a call bell you want a nurse to somehow come like a magic and she's standing in front of you so when we were looking at this you obviously one of the easiest solution was get more manpower <laughs> now when you look at more manpower there is something for the hospital to be profitable you look at an EBITDA you want to have a healthy EBITDA there was no point in being in this business so we said okay in this place can digitalization play a role so what we smartly did we looked at all the jobs that a nurse was doing, primarily right from the time she checks in to checks out. And we were surprised that 35% of the time she is doing the work that is non clinical. It is as simple as I want a bed sheet, I want a bottle mm -hmm. of water, I want a towel. 
we said okay can we take this entire non clinical work away from the nursing then we said okay if we take the non clinical work away who will do the non clinical work today what is happening we realize this non clinical work today nurse basically is a intermediator she goes into the room she goes into the room and ultimately she picks up the call and she starts following up with the department and the department delivers the job so we developed a new technology which is known as one touch whereby every single room we have got an ipad whatever the patient wants to request it has more than 8000 requests already baked inside the system he presses it it goes to the user department who is supposed to deliver the job and the job doesn't get delivered within a stipulated period of time it gets escalated to the ceo and every nurse at any point of time i call it the atc of medcare i am able to see from my corporate office how many requests is pending what is the type of request and you know when we started doing this first question that hr asked me how many nurses will i be able to reduce with this automation let us also remember one very important thing i am a firm believer of always automation might not help you to directly bring down manpower but with this exercise what we were able to do we were able to deploy the manpower in the right place and it led to my tremendous amount of patient experience going up saying wow everything that you need is one is just one click away step 2 we are planning to introduce alexa in the room why even press a button call alexa and say i want water and the water should water should be there in the room so primarily in my portfolio what i what i what i do is i constantly benchmark with other industries to say what are they doing and i am a firm believer if something is readily available don't break your head reinvent and recreate do a control c control v marry it to the culture take approval from your ceo and just go uh, you know gango about it and make it happen because here i will do a very very important quote in the competitive world that we live in it is not the big that is the small it is the faster that is the slower so basically whatever you think today if you don't mm-hmm. implement it the idea has already gone out of the box so this is one typical example of automation digitization that has helped me to increase my nursing bandwidth increase my patient satisfaction and create a delight this is one the second thing that is more technical and more to do with my consulting um, and this obviously does not happen in this part of the country but in my previous role i think people come to us when they are extremely sick and when they are extremely sick they spend lot of money they uh, we go through multiple investigations we go through multiple medications sometimes we might even lose a life it also happens we said the entry point to a hospital if we shift the entire focus from illness to wellness if together the public entities and the private entities come together and say scanning persons health is mandatory once a year for everybody look at what a different organization look at what a different country we will be and it will truly be healthier dubai where everybody irrespective of everything goes to a complete health check so if there is something that is abnormal if suppose your hba1c which is of diabetic sometimes people don't even know that he is diabetic he comes to us when already his hba1c levels are more than critical values and his foot there is a problem his eyesight there is a problem and look at how much of money he spent what he goes through instead of that we are a firm believer it is i am a firm believer people should come to me at the early stage i should scan him and i should be able to provide him accessible readily cheaper healthcare at his doorstep so i think i gave you two different examples very different thought process but i thought i should bring this to the table no but i'm still trying to understand how has your company benefited out of the customer experience has there been uh, an improvement in your uh, margins in your efficiency in your okay. top line anything there you are asking me typically a board question what a board director will ask okay <laughs> so let me answer in the most best sensible way see one very very important thing and i have faced this question on every single project that i present to the board saying you are doing this tell me the roi on this mm. right for example so i will answer this to you see whenever you invest in customer service what does typically happens when you invest in customer service your customers typically go out there is a there is a there is a number that we look at which is the bread and butter of any cx guy called nps net promoter score mm. okay so ultimately when somebody gets a great experience typically what he does he goes and speaks about this experience to his friends at least to 10 people and then what happens medcare becomes the top of the mind recall for them and let me also tell you 
we are in a healthcare competitive industry basic clinical excellence is today passe when he steps into a premium healthcare organization i know my hygiene will be taken care of i will get the best clinical outcome i will get the best clinical learns today what is happening the things in and around of it is becoming very very important and people want to see value there people want to have zero wait time he wants to come and he wants to see the doctor people want the test results to be made available at the click of a button in his mobile phone so ultimately what it does to us and i have gone to this place one year eight months i'm trying to give those seeds of excellence from customer experience and ultimately it has a ripple effect and it has got a multiplier effect on customer experience so if you ask me just to give you a number so that you understand pretty well they say every 1% growth in nps leads to at least 1 million in your overall ebitda but again these are numbers it differs from industry to industry but you know this all are facts and figures yet to be proved because there is sometimes difficult to make a correlation but when the growth happens you actually sometimes don't even know why the growth happens and it is only because of customer service okay uh, so benefits uh, you've explained to us in uh, terms of customer experience uh, and of course uh, of efficiency of so predictability of uh, more accuracy and fewer uh, mistakes coming in pointed out by our other speakers as well Uh, thank you gentlemen for joining us uh, joining me today to talk about this important issue of intelligent ro- uh, robotic process automation and how this affects the entire digital transformation journey and how uh, businesses function and improve on efficiencies on experiences and how it helps their customers thank you so much uh, for joining us uh, uh, mr shalan mr jagayman and mr bhattacharjee thank you all Uh, for joining us today and sharing with us uh, your views on uh, business automation and digital transformation thank you you are most welcome okay thank you bye bye